Hey guys, welcome back to New Fact Diction. Today I'm reading a little too much. This is part two of the Kadoba Gizuku series, and uh, it's by AVV I88. And let's go. Here's the summary. When jokes become a little too much for Izuku, he goes to his favorite sleepy teacher for cuddles. The day had been calm for Shota. His class had not done major destruction in the classroom. He got every nap in between the classes, and now he got two hours of free period because class 3B is out today, and that was supposed to be his current class. He took his he took this opportunity to relax in the teacher's lounge, doing whatever needed to be done. Of course, everything good has to come to an end eventually. He was working on some papers when a timid knock ran through the door room. He looked at the clock on the wall, wondering what a student wanted in the middle of class. He stood up from his desk and walked over to the door and opened it. He was met with a red-eyed problem child. Tears were streaming down his face as he sniffed. Shota didn't say anything, just opened his arms in a welcoming gesture. Izuku wasted no time before jumping into his arms, sobbing silently. It's okay, you're okay, Shota mumbled as he walked over to the couch. He sat down, bringing his problem child with him. Izuku sat in the teacher's lap, pressing his face into Shota's neck. Shota ran his hand through the curly green hair in a soothing manner. When the sobs had calmed down into small hiccups, Shota asked what was wrong. Do you want to talk about what happened? He asked, giving the teen a chance to decline. That was something Shota had found out early on. Izuku could easily become stressed or panicked if he felt pressured to talk, so he always asked questions in a way that it could easily be declined. It's just so unfair. I finally have a good control over my quirk, but I still get teased about it, Izuku hiccuped. And I know that they are just teasing, but when Achiako said I needed better control unless I wanted to be useless on the field, I just couldn't. Izuku cried, clutching Shota's shirt until his knuckles turned white. That is not true, Izuku. Both you and I know that you have gotten so much better in controlling your quirk over the past year and a half. And even if you couldn't control your quirk, you would never be useless. Do you understand? Shota said, he would have to talk to his class about the lines between teasing and actual hurtful comments. He knew that no one had meant anything bad about the comments, but he also knew that Izuku had a past with bullying, even though he didn't know how far that bullying went. But it's true, I can't be a hero quick us, Izuku cried, starting to work himself up again. Shuta shushed him, hugging the teen tighter. That's not true. You can become a hero with or without a quirk, as long as you have the heart to do so, Shota explains, playing with the fluffy, uncontrollable green curls. Really? Izuku asked, looking up at Shota in awe. Of course, problem child. I don't have a quirk that helps me in fighting. Do you think I can't do hero work because of that? He asked, looking at the teen. Of course not. You're really good at your work, Izuku hurriedly explained. Then I don't see how you can't, he said. Izuku was quiet for a bit before nodding. Then a kitten yawn escaped him as he rubbed his eyes tiredly. Come on, I think you need some sleeping bag cuddles, he mumbled against Izuku's forehead. Izuku nodded as enthusiastically as he could, another yawn escaping his lips. Once both of them were comfortable laid out on the couch in the sleeping bag, Izuku resting his head on Shota's chest, they both could relax. Izuku, Shota spoke up after a moment. Hmm? Izuku hummed, keeping his eyes closed. Who told you that you can become a hero without a quirk? He asked, looking down at the teen. Izuku opened his eyes, looking up at him with tired eyes. Everyone, my entire life mostly. The last straw was when All Might said I couldn't. Izuku answered before closing his eyes again. We sure Shota could even ask the next question. A light snow escaped the teen's lips. He sighed, 
planning on asking Siku about it later, but right now, he could go for a nap. And if All Might came into the classroom with a black eye the next day, Izuku didn't really need to know why. That is how Hisashi found the two. After his lesson with 1A, an hour later, Izuku was cuddled into his husband's side, clutching Shota's shirt as Shota had Izuku protectively in return. Hisashi beamed at the site, taking at least 25 pictures of the cute site before walking over to his desk. And deciding to leave the two alone. The next day, Shota walked into the classroom, a learning plan already in mind, before he started the class. However, he put the sleeping bag in the front corner of the classroom for Uzuki to come into. He walked over to the podium before hearing his bell, gaining the attention of the class. Today, we are going to talk about court discrimination, more accurately, the court list. Shota informed. Everyone looked a little confused at that. Can someone tell me what you, how you think the corkless are being treated in society? Zero? I don't think they have it that bad. They don't truly have a quirk to be discriminated by. And they're just there, you know? Zero said hesitantly. Okay. Mina? Shota said, wanting to get as much out of the class as possible. I think they are just under involved and because of that, they are more they are more protected, she said. Back ago, the quirkless are being treated as shit because it's something they can't control, he grumbled. Shota knew about Bakugo's and Zuku's history and how much the blonde team regretted his actions, so Sota decided to ask the next question to not have all the attention on him. Okay, how about becoming a hero? He asked the class, looking over all the ends, hands that raised Ida. The Quirkless can't become heroes. It is way too dangerous for someone not evolved enough to fight villains, Ida said with his normal arm trap. Shota hummed slightly, irritated with how his class could think something like that, but also not surprised. Okay, with that we are thinking. Think about this. Ayomi, you can't do anything except stand still under a fight as she your laser beams because the rest of your body is like the quirkless. Ashido, same with you and your acid. You both would need someone with a quirk that affects their legs to get around. Someone like Tanya, but Tanya can't use anything other than his legs. Hiragari can't do anything other than stuff because her body is quirkless in a fight. Yang Rosa would need to make something that could help her get around, then a weapon to fight with. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Shorty explains, looking at his class as realization dawns over their faces. But how about discrimination? Kirishima asked, looking curious. The chance of someone quirkless living over the age of 10 without taking their own life or being killed is 85%. The chance of living over the age of 15 is 96%. Bullying, abuse, unfair treatment of heroes, police office, police, hospitals, etc. are high. The quirkless are treated as less than dirt. I want all of you to read a five-page essay on this topic to the end of next week. Shota finished, satisfied that he finally could talk to his class about this. We will go over all quirk discrimination later this week. You are dismissed. Then Shota walked over to his sleeping bag, where Izuku was still napping. Izuku cuddled up to him, a small smile on his face. Thank you, he whispered. Shota smiled fondly at his, the kid, pulling him closer. Of course, he whispered back before closing his eyes. So that was part two. Um, this one was a little rushed because I'm probably not going to have time tonight to record. So if there were a little bit more mistakes in here than usual, that's why. And so there was one more part of the series that started this whole series, really. The, the third one was really the only one I wanted to read, but I figured I might as well read the whole series. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you later. Bye!